It's uh, been one of the toughest things in, in my whole life, really. You've lost the sense of achievement, that you're never going to achieve anything like that again in your life. I was diving since I was nine years old. It was what I did day in, day out, all the time. And um, all of a sudden, you just stop. My name is Peter Waterfield, um, I'm 35 years old uh, and I'm a retired uh, four-time Olympian and uh, Olympic silver medalist. The only reason why I, I got into diving was because my dad um, knew that where we was growing up was a, quite a rough place and he didn't want me and my brothers running around the streets loads. So he started to introduce me to sport. About a week later I was in doing my first diving session. And like I, I can still remember it today, just, I just fell in love with it. I've basically um, won medals in every major event you can do in our sport. So going from a World Championships, a European Championships, World Cups, European Cups, uh, Commonwealth Games, Olympics. Obviously the Olympic Games are the, 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 the pinnacle of our career, you don't get any, any better than the, the Olympic Games. So. On the day, on the day when we won that Olympic medal, it was it was sort of like we, oh, I, I kind of knew it was going to happen. It was like the day was everything had worked perfectly in the end. Even though I'd got my injury just before because I twisted my ankle six weeks before, and they said I probably wouldn't go in. It, it just made everything um, worthwhile and put it all in perspective of how hard we'd worked for it. And um, if you work hard, you can you can reap the rewards sometimes. You know? Every day I got, I got out of the pool and I felt wrecked, my body felt wrecked and, and it was, you know, we're hitting the water at 35 miles an hour and, and um, we're doing six hours a day of training in the gym, putting our bodies through rigorous exercises and I loved it and that's what I miss. Coaching Pete was very exciting and frustrating all at the same time because although he was talented, he also made quite a lot of mistakes. When he was 14, um, he won the Junior European Championships in Geneva in Switzerland, and that was just fantastic because he was my first homegrown diver that had done that. I'd had previous medalists and winners, but they hadn't been started by me in a program. Um, and then thereafter, obviously, winning Olympic silver in 2004 was brilliant. Um, winning the Commonwealth Games in 2002 was brilliant, and also him winning an individual medal at the World Cup in 2012 was brilliant. So there were pretty several highlights, but obviously I think the Olympic medal was the biggest one. His complete devotion, having somebody that good in a pool that can do a dive that you want to clap almost every day, um, is what I definitely miss. And the relationship that we had, so his trust in me. So if I asked him to do something, he would do it without question because he believed it would work and, and it did and we were a very successful team. Where I grew up in London was where the Olympic Park was built. I used to run around there when I was a kid growing up. So um, the fact that it, it would, could possibly have come around in my lifetime was amazing and I had to go for it. And there was only one diver sort of that had caught, caught me up by then, which was Tom. So me and Tom went on to get, uh, just miss out on a medal and get fourth place. Um, and my plan was then to carry on over until the next Commonwealth Games. The British Diving had another idea they, afterwards. They, they, they agreed my plan to go to the Commonwealth Games, um, but they eventually sort of pulled my funding just after the London Olympics, a year after. They didn't deal with it very well. But, you know, that, that's just the way it is. It's, sport's not just uh, people achieving great things, it's, it's a business. And it just uh, eventually just had to go, you know what, it's, uh, it's time anyway. So um, I'd done everything I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to end on a high anyway. You don't get much of a, a better event to um, end on than a, a home Olympic Games. I, don't, I, I think that there could be uh, something to, to help athletes after they retire because um, like you say it's just like you get kicked out and, uh, and forgotten about if you haven't got a profile like a, a Tom Daly or a, 
uh, you know, Hussein Bolt or you know, the futures. Uh, hard to predict now. I think it was difficult for him to adjust when he retired and still is. Because when you're an athlete, uh, particularly at that level, you have a very structured life and to lose that structure is a really difficult thing. The most important and difficult one was money because he went from being an elite athlete who is funded, they're funded very well by UK Sport, uh, to someone who had to find all of his own money. And he's not a super intelligent human being, his command of the English language isn't brilliant, so for him to be doing all of those things and trying to find a job elsewhere was very difficult. Well, I actually, sort of, my job, I, I work uh, going into schools as a mentor, um, f and we do that through activities, through inspirational speaking, and talk about my career, and we, we w look at other people's careers and, and role models and stuff like that. Um, and, and, yeah, just try and let them know that the, the people that are on the TV winning the medals uh, didn't come from anywhere more special than where they've come from. The positives out of it are, are, are brilliant, you know, it's, it's great to have much more time um, to spend with the kids because that was one of the things I was looking forward to was being more with the family, so. Um, but on the other hand, if you ask my wife the same question, uh, you know, she knows I've struggled with uh, quitting my sport um, and she's been there to support me the whole time, you know, so. But I'm sure I've been a right pain sometimes because of it and, um, you know, it, it, I, I can only apologise sometimes, but it, it, it's something that I've never been able to, I've never had to deal with, never expected it to be the way it was. Um, and, and yeah, but she, she stuck by me and, and sort of uh, encouraged me through it, you know, to, to, to remember the, the, the positives out of it and remember the good times. And Both of my kids um, love sport, they're a, bit, they're a bit like me, they're a bit quite annoying to the other people around us because we, we can pretty much play any sport and, and pretty, be half decent at it, and my kids are the same. I'm Marshall and I'm eight. Uh, I'm Peter. And I'm Lewis and I'm 15. I must have only been about seven when I first got into football, and I've played for Eastleigh for most of my career. Yeah, hoping that I can either break into the Eastleigh first team or maybe bigger, I'm not sure. Lewis, he loves football. He's, all he's ever done since he could walk is kick a football around. Um, he was always coming down the pool with me and watching me do my sport. Um, and he was in the gym doing sort of trampolining and stuff like that from a really young age. And he actually started to get really good as a diver um, and could have pushed on, but he just, he just didn't want to do it. Hello, I'm playing football. Um, I play for Southwark now. Um, other teams want me, but um, position. I play striker as well. Marshall's um, tried it when he was really young, so I don't know how much he remembers of it. But yeah, he, 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 again, Marshall was just one that just never wanted to do it. In fact, he, he wouldn't learn to swim because he thought he would have to go and do diving. So when I took him swimming, he would deliberately sink so that he didn't have to get in the diving pool. And I reassured him that he doesn't have to do diving, but he does have to swim. So he's getting better at his swimming now. I think it's just to do with the water. I don't think I could hold my breath long enough. <laughs> I used to miss him actually quite a lot. Like any, if anyone even mentioned that, I actually used to cry. I remember, mm. but um, it was um, painful. With him. <laughs> I've always said that I'd encourage him. Like I'd introduce them to to diving, but if they didn't choose to do it, that's 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 fine. And, and find something that you really do love to do. And I, I can't get them away from football, <laughs> so looks like that's where we're going with them. <laughs>